Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk 102. When last we joined the heroes, they discovered that Karina had been felled by a poison crossbow bolt and died in the arms of the future centaur leader. The group was distraught, but none more so than Cave Silvertongue, who blamed himself for not dealing with the rogue knight earlier. After the burial was completed, the morose group decided that they had had enough of the situation and agreed to return to Phoenix and resolve the matter at the focal point. A question about the surroundings determined that they were only a day's ride from the Katorian Sphere, a waterway on the eastern edge of the nation. Bulger was elated as he told the party that he had a better way to return to the large city than taking several weeks on horseback through the frontier. We rejoin them as they saddle up and prepare to leave the fort. The group lifted themselves onto their mounts and prepared to leave Fort Myers. Investigator Rockfist and her mama approached and handed over two bags of sweet-smelling items. Fargus looked at the bags quizzically and inquired about the contents. The elder dwarf smacked him on the foot and pointed out that he was still a growing boy and needed some solid nutrition. He smiled through his sadness and nodded his head, thanking her politely. The detective approached Sister Elaine and asked her if she was certain of her course of action. The Reverend Daughter shrugged her shoulders in response and pointed out that she didn't know, but she knew that the death had to be avenged. In response, the female dwarf handed the cleric an ornate mace. Wrinkling her brow, Sister Elaine asked what the item was for. Investigator Rockfist explained, This belonged to my father, and he was quite fond of it. I tried to get the hang of using this weapon, but was not very good at it, and I don't think I ever will be. I know you possess one similar to this, but you may have more success against the Syndicate with it than I would just holding on to it. The investigator went on to explain that on a superior hit by a true warrior, an opponent may be blinded by justice and thereby easier to deal with. Sister Elaine attempted to return the precious item, but the dwarf shook her head. No, you keep it. You use it, and you bring to justice those who have done you harm. I would not have it any other way. Sister Elaine thanked the dwarf and guided her mount in behind Fargus and Bulger, who were making their way out of the fort as a band of merchants were coming in. Cabe and Lady Irena were bringing up the rear when a pair of guards stepped in front of the bard's horse, barring him from leaving. Confused, he looked down sullenly and spotted the captain of the watch approaching from the side. Anger began to take over the half-elf's face at the approach, and he rubbed his elbow against his slung weapon. The watch commander nodded to his men, who moved to one side, and he reached up with an open palm. More confusion set in, but Cabe returned the man's grasp in a firm handshake. The commander leaned forward and whispered to the mounted adventure, Stop blaming yourself for what happened. It isn't your fault, so don't let it cloud your judgment. The human released his grip, and Cave had a moment of clarity. His rage subsided, and he nodded to the man, who quipped, Come back any time. It will get boring here without you. And he smacked Cave's mount on the ass, lurching both forward. Lady Irena nodded to the man and proceeded outside with the rest of the group. Off in the distance, along the ridge line, the party spotted a long row of centaur. The smallest member of the ensemble waved to the group before leading his people back into the woods. The adventurers rode for more than an hour in silence as each reflected on the events of the past several days and weeks. Each had a mix of good and bad memories, but declined to share them with anyone. As noon approached, a collection of farms cropped up, including a small roadhouse called the Tweeding Tavern. Fargus guided his mount over to the hitching post and felt a break from the road was necessary. The group silently concurred, and each allowed their mounts a break as they went inside for a meal. Entering the small tavern, the group noticed a smattering of farmer types that had stopped talking as the heroes entered. A few moments later, the citizens disregarded the group entirely and went back to their lively conversations. 
An older woman came up and made small talk, but the group's sullen demeanor did less to endear them to her. She explained that the food and beverages were available and took their orders before leaving. Cabe looked across the table and addressed Bolger. <sighs> so what's the story with this Kettle Torian place? Squat Gnome chuckled and corrected the bard with Katorian before explaining that it was a good-sized port in the area and multiple merchant ships that cruise the seas in every direction. The Katorian Sphere is a large inlet that provides safe harbor from ocean-based pirates. If we can get to Haddonfield, we can go anywhere in the world, he exclaimed. Fargus took a sip of a fresh tankard that was presented to him by the waitress and choked out, <coughs> We're going back to Phoenix. End of story. You're more than welcome to join us, or we can part ways at the seaport. The former sailor nodded and pointed out that he wasn't sure if the group had changed their minds and instead wanted to deal with Paul Depot, the syndicate head, instead. He assured everyone that passage to Phoenix would be attainable from Haddonfield and they would get there much faster than fighting their way across the frontier. Plus, he added, they'll never expect us to be coming after them, let alone on a ship. The group shook their heads in agreement and began to eat their meal. While the amount was filling, the taste left a lot to be desired. Lady Irena confirmed with the waitress that the coastline could be reached by last light, but Haddonfield would be at least two more days as they would need to circle around the sphere. A groan escaped Fargus's lips at the delay and glared at the gnome. Sheepishly, the squat man pointed out that once aboard ship it would still be faster than going overland, adding, and far less recognition issues as well. Sister Elaine confirmed that on the right ship, they could rest easy and not worry about being spotted by agents of the syndicate. The group mulled over the positive aspect and a pair of farmers entered the establishment. One was quite upset and going on a rant over an encounter he recently had. And those cucks just rode off in their fancy gray cloaks, waving in the wind and kicking shit on me. Do you believe that? After I gave them directions, that's how they treat me? I'll tell you what, Boris, those great cloaked bastards can kiss my arse. They're just lucky they had me outnumbered. A morose cave silver tongue turned in his chair and faced off with the men. Gray cloaks? Like knights? The pair looked at each other and Boris left to get a table while his friend remained behind. Yeah, that's what I said even if I weren't talking to the likes of you. He angrily continued and demanded to know if the adventurers were friends of the Grey Cloaks. Before the party could answer, the tavern patrons all stood up in apparent solidarity with the man. The bard rose to his feet, causing the commoners to bristle with the anticipation of a fight, and he walked over to the man. Cabe pulled out two short swords, adding to the tenseness in the building. Friends? Hell no! No gray cloak is a friend of mine, farmer. Why don't you tell me where those bastards were headed, and I'll give you a handful of coins for your trouble. We close out this episode now, and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.